You have uh, been to a nutrition class before? No, I haven't. Yes, I've been to her lecture before. I found it interesting and I wanted to hear. You, um, and would you attend another lecture by Dean? I would attend another lecture by her, yes. Why at this point in your life have you chose to get a little more informed about uh, nutrition? Um, I think everybody needs to right now because, uh, you know, once you hit a certain age, th that's one of the most important things in life, really. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We have a very important topic to talk about today. It is one that concerns our food supply, what we've been eating for the last hundred years as a generation, and how we can change our health and our weight simply by the food choices that we make. Now, human beings have been on the planet for millions and millions of years. And it is only in the last 150 to 100 years that we have seen the skyrocketing numbers of heart disease, osteoporosis, arthritis, cancer, and obesity. Obesity is now the second preventable disease next to lung cancer. We can prevent this disease. And now we're starting to see it in our children and diabetes in our children. I'm not a stranger to some of these conditions. Many of you probably know that uh, I used to be 100 pounds overweight. And I'll just tell you that when I was a little girl, I uh, was very, very skinny. And my mother's friends and family used to say, are you feeding Dee? Because, you know, she's so skinny. Well, nobody used to have to ask heard that question after I got to be about the age of nine, because that was the age that I started to put on the pounds. And it just so happens to coincide with the time that my parents were getting a divorce, and it was a very tumultuous and painful time in my family. And I know that I sought comfort in the food that I would eat, and I always went for the real sweet things and the, um, the baked goods. So um, I was a fat child, chubby child, I say. I ate an even tubbier teen. I got to be tubby as a teen. And then I just became a, a fat adult. No, I wasn't fat. I was, I was obese. I was morbidly obese. This photo was taken in 1990. And by 1992, I had climbed somewhere to be over 210 pounds. Now, I'm a 4 foot 10 inch person. I have a petite body frame, and 210 pounds is 100 pounds over my normal body size. So that's twice the size of what a person my size should be. Now, uh, I didn't really try to diet at all until I was 19 years old. And that was the beginning of a series of failed attempts at trying to lose weight. I, I started, I, I lost 40 pounds on my first diet at 19. I quickly gained the pounds back and more. And I did that several times during my adult life. And that's what we call the yo-yo syndrome. You know, when you go up and you go down, you go up and down. Well, after a while, I just yoed. I couldn't go any, I couldn't go down anymore. I just kept going up. And so, um, there was a time when I just thought, well, maybe I'm just supposed to be this way. I tried to resign myself to just not try anymore to do anything. I, I was sort of a late bloomer. I didn't start my college career until I was 26. So when I was 30, I was in my fourth to fifth year of college and majoring in chemistry and environmental studies. And um, part of one of my classes for my environmental studies coursework was to go out into uh, the geographic area and study some of the native um, land and, and try to see how the people lived back when they were uh, Native Americans there. And I was, at the time, San Francisco Bay Area. We were in this beautiful marshland, 
And part of the, the um, field trip involved hiking up a steep hill. And, okay, I was 100 pounds overweight, and by the way, I smoked a pack a day. So I wasn't in the greatest of health. Um, in fact, at, at the age of 18, I had to have my gallbladder removed because I had a gallstone. So I had a, a history of not good health. And for some reason, I just thought it would be easy to hike up a hill, not really comprehending my condition. And so I started out very enthusiastically with the rest of the class hiking up this hill. And I got about halfway up. And my heart was pounding, couldn't breathe. My knees were about to give out on me. And I was 30 years old. And the hike leader saw that I was struggling. And he came down the hill back to me. And he reached out his hand. And he said, can I take your pack, my backpack, as if that was the problem? That was the most humiliating moment for me I think I had ever had in my life up until that point. Because it was the fact that I was so overweight was symbolic of how I had let my life go and get out of control. And so in that moment, I call that my epiphany. I need to change. And in fact, I heard a voice coming from somewhere deep inside of me that said, you need to change your life or you're going to die. And it was that dramatic and that scary that I paid attention. And as I made my way, I did make it up to the top of the hill, finally. The rest of the class was already there. But when I got to the top of the hill, my foot slipped on a rock. And I went, boom, right on my butt. More humiliation and shame washed over me in that moment. And I was on the top of the world looking out over the San Francisco Bay. It was a beautiful March day. And I felt like the lowest thing on the earth. I can't really tell you exactly what shifted, but something did. And I got some help. Now, I remember, I was almost finished with my college career as a chemist. So I had quite a bit of information and knowledge about chemistry. Um, and I thought, now, these things that happen in the laboratory with chemicals and stuff, I bet that happens in the body, too. And I wonder if there's something that's not right in my body that's preventing me from being able to keep weight off or preventing me from getting healthy. And so uh, I started to crack the books.